My parents were civil servants, so it's not as if they had money. Um, and we had, they had seven children. I was number four. And so you can imagine for a civil service family what that meant in terms of looking after all the children. So we grew up in Port Harcourt, where my parents were working at that time. And when it got to time to go to secondary school, I chose to go to Federal Government College, Sokoto. And for those who have been that far, um, you will know that Sokoto is really, really a very, very long way away from home if you were living in Port Harcourt. Now, what did that do for me? As a starting point, it made me become very independent very, very early. If you have not been to the north and you went to Sokoto even as an adult today to live, definitely you'll be homesick. So it was a different, different type of life. But it made me understand human beings so much better. And of course, it taught me how to live, you know, um, and be very dependent because I was, what, 11 years old at that point in time. What's up and welcome back to my channel. So I came across this video of Dr. Habat Wigwe where he was talking about his early beginning, how struggle, how difficult life was for him before he made it in life. A lot of us are only aware that Habat was a very wealthy man. He worked at the bank. He later became the CEO of Access Bank. He owned a university. He has money his net worth is a lot to write home about right and none of us really asked how was his childhood like how did he started did he grow up in the midst of wealth or was his father one of the richest people in port Arcot? the answer of all this is no Herbert wasn't a son of a rich man and i think this part of habat is supposed to be made public for people to also learn from him in not people shouldn't just be aware of the wealthy part the sweet story about his life they shouldn't just know that habat was a wealthy man and died of helicopter crash you should also know that habat was a very poor person habat struggled Habat made a decision of going to Sokoto at just 11 years old for his college education. This part should be known. This man didn't just wake up and became a millionaire because the rate of fast money, you know, the rate in which youth of this day just want to make fast money is so alarming. And if there is anything that should encourage young people to work, to struggle, to be hard working, and gradually make their money then it should be made public it should be put on the earth for a lot of people to learn the story of habat really inspired me the truth is that speaking when go make them for this life allow me to speak it in pigeon here Picking when go make them for this life, you know they had to identify. If you see a person who will be very successful in life, the kind of decision they make will truly determine. You see that person who doesn't like, who doesn't just want to be really comfortable under someone, who doesn't derive any form of joy, collecting from someone all the time. Instead, they always make bold decisions. You see that child that always take a different decision. You know, when others are choosing things that is going to be easier for them, they go for things that they will that they will make sure that they will not be comfortable with them. Instead, they will create a mechanism to survive. They will create a way for them to be comfortable. They will love struggling. They fight for themselves. They want to conquer it themselves. They don't want to hide under somebody's shadow just because they are enjoying. They are having three square meals every day. Herbert went to Sokoto where he doesn't have a father or he is mother there. He just went there for his studies when he was just 11 years old. That was truly a bold step this man took. Doing so, it will make him to be just focused on his studies. It will make him to know that this is time to, to struggle. This is time to conquer. I just came across this video and I feel like sharing to a lot of us. Sometimes when you read about people, don't just read about those sweet stories about them. Look for their sad story. Like they said, every wealthy man, every rich man, every wealthy person have a sad story. 
that gave them no choice than to keep moving. And that is why they get to where they are today because they didn't give up. So I do not know what you are going through right now. But if you're under my voice, I am saying, well done. Never you give up. Keep moving. Keep pushing. It may seem difficult, but trust me, you can do it if you put your mind at it. If you can think of it, of course, then you can do it. Never you give up for whatsoever reason. Keep going. Those rich men you aspire today, those rich men you want to be like, they all started from nothing. They all had nothing when they started. They all never knew that they are going to be the richest people in the world. A lot of them came from ghetto. A lot of them schooled in the government school where because the school fees is free, a lot of them had nothing. A lot of them couldn't even feed three square meals when they were children. Okay, so never you let yourself down. Keep your heads up and keep moving. And above all, it doesn't really matter how many years you're going to live on earth. What matters is that those years that you are alive, make sure you leave a legacy that is going to live on when you are no more. Habat is gone, but trust me, his legacy lives on. He impacted and that is what matters. I will see you guys on my next one. Don't forget to like and share this video.